As recorded on E207 and E204, the first visual indication that the anomalous plume penetrated the external tank was seen at 64.66 seconds as an abrupt change in the shape and color of the plume. This is an indication of hydrogen leaking from the external tank. At 64.705 seconds, a bright sustained glow developed between the orbiter and the external tank. Slight changes in the hydrogen tank pressure telemetry data confirmed the leak 2.2 seconds later at 66.8 seconds, when the LH2 tank pressurization system could no longer maintain its normal repressurization rate. At 72.6 seconds, the LH2 tank pressure could no longer be maintained indicating that the leak path had significantly increased and was growing rapidly. At 72.2 seconds, the guidance system showed that right SRB motion diverged from the orbiter and left SRB, indicating that the lower ET SRB strut was severed or pulled loose. During this time frame, exaggerated steering commands and control system responses registered in telemetry data. At approximately 73 seconds, both liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen pressure to the main engines showed a significant drop. This was followed at 73.124 seconds by the appearance of a circumferential white pattern around the ET aft region, suggesting LH2 tank structural failure. 13 milliseconds later, at 73.137 seconds, vapor was observed at the inner tank, indicative of the liquid oxygen tank failing. This can be attributed to abnormal loads induced by either the right SRB rotation at the forward attach point or the propulsive forces created by the LH2 tank aft bulkhead failure, probably both. Within milliseconds, liquid oxygen was observed streaming along the external tank. At 73.191 seconds, a flash was observed between the ET and orbiter that was immediately followed by the start of total vehicle breakup at 73.213 seconds. During the next 100 milliseconds, additional flashes occur in the SRB forward attach area. As the ET broke up, the released fluids vaporized rapidly, producing an expanding cloud of gases, vapors, and cryogenic fluid with embedded debris and localized combustion of mixed gases. No shock wave or other evidence of a violent explosion was detected in the imagery. Illumination from a combination of SRB plume radiance, reflected sunlight, and peripheral burning of gases gives the cloud the appearance of a fireball. By 73.6 seconds, the main engines were in automatic shutdown mode as a result of reduced propellant pressures. The last telemetry from Challenger was received 73.618 seconds after launch. The actual vehicle breakup was essentially obscured from view by the vapor cloud which abruptly enveloped the vehicle. Hundreds of fragments were noted exiting the ET cloud. Those identified included the shuttle main engines, the left wing, crew cabin, and both SRBs. Approximately one second after initial breakup, film showed the front segment of the orbiter emerging from the cloud. The nose, crew cabin, and a portion of the cargo bay make up the orbiter in this view. Nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer from the forward reaction control system provided a distinctive orange-brown color to the cloud. By 74.578 seconds, a yellow cloud or flash was visible near the orbiter nose segment. This is believed to be caused by burning monomethyl hydrazine from the forward RCS. The flash reaction from the RCS propellants abated, revealing separation of the nose section from the crew cabin. Less than a quarter of a second later, the crew cabin was noted to be severed from the cargo bay. Igniting of propellant discharge continued to be observed from the forward RCS. A camera south of the launch pad recorded a wider array of debris exiting the vapor cloud.
The initial emergence of the crew cabin from this perspective was at 75.237 seconds. The initial path of the crew cabin from the vapor cloud carried it across the path of an adjacent contrail, clearly revealing its truncated form and attitude. The left wing became visible at 78.531 seconds. The main engines and crew cabin are also identifiable. After 10 seconds, the crew cabin was seen again with the front end and top of the cabin visible. As the subject moved further away and dropped lower on the horizon, the quality of the image for visual analysis deteriorated rapidly. Long-range tracking cameras followed the SRBs through range safety destruct. At approximately 75.8 seconds, the right SRB was seen exiting the cloud. Camera E207 shows the right SRB after the breakup, and the joints are clearly visible except for the aft field joint. This confirmed the location of the plume along the longitudinal axis of the SRB. The separated nose cap and deployed drogue parachute are identified at approximately 76.4 seconds. The shock wave from the detonation of the linear shape charge on the right SRB can be seen clearly. Simultaneously, the left SRB was destroyed. At approximately 37 seconds, Challenger had encountered the first of several expected high altitude wind shear conditions, which lasted until about 64 seconds. These wind shears are best illustrated by the effect on the booster exhaust trails. The effect of wind shear was immediately sensed and countered by the guidance, navigation, and control system. Wind reconstructions were aided by comparing predicted exhaust trail shapes with acquired photography. The reconstructed winds were used in trajectory and flight loads analyses, which verified that the loads were within limits. Several flashes in the SSME plumes were observed during the flight. As similar flashes have been seen on several previous flights, they are considered not to have contributed to the accident. The visible condensation that appears in this frame is created by shock waves which develop as the vehicle passes through the speed of sound. A large-scale search effort was initiated to recover the space shuttle debris. 22 ships, 6 underwater search vessels, and 33 aircraft participated in the operation. The pieces recovered initially were those found floating on the surface. The submarine fleet was used to locate and inspect underwater debris. Objects identified as being important to the investigation were retrieved. Fifty percent of the entire vehicle was recovered in the effort. The ocean search area was located at the edge of the Gulf Stream at depths up to 1,200 feet. Approximately 93,000 square miles of ocean were searched. The recovered hardware was brought to the logistics facility, where reconstruction efforts helped to verify the investigation team's findings, as well as to analyze the structural breakup mechanics of the orbiter, ET, and SRBs. Inside the logistics facility, parts were arranged on the floor according to their location on the vehicle. Forty-five percent of the orbiter itself was recovered. The debris confirmed that the orbiter and its payloads did not contribute to the cause of the accident and that the orbiter breakup was a result of aerodynamic effects rather than explosive effects. 
Shown here are parts of the orbiter forward fuselage structure, which surrounds the crew cabin. Extensive heating and erosion was detected on the right aft section of the orbiter. The paint was scorched and blackened on the right side of the aft fuselage. Thermal distress was apparent on the right rudder speed brake, while the left showed little effect. Thermal effects were also seen on the Elevon. The aft left side of the orbiter showed no apparent sign of heat damage. The remaining recovered parts of the orbiter showed no evidence of fire or explosion from within the vehicle. All three main engines were recovered and helped to verify that they did not contribute to the cause of the accident. The external tank was similarly reconstructed. 25% of the liquid hydrogen tank, 80% of the inner tank, and 5% of the liquid oxygen tank was recovered. Most of the external hardware was also recovered. The nose cap sustained very little damage. In general, the recovered pieces were quite large. The spray on foam insulation exhibited varying degrees of thermal effects from extreme charring to practically no effect. The external tank range safety destruct explosive charges housed in this cable tray were recovered undetonated eliminating them as a possible factor in external tank breakup. The inner tank region showed signs of buckling in the fore and aft direction. This would be consistent with the impulsive thrust that resulted from the sudden loss of liquid hydrogen from the aft section of the tank. This shearing failure of the forward attachment fitting with the right SRB was caused by the booster's rotation after the aft strut area failed. The stiffener splinters on the right-hand side of the inner tank show evidence of contact which match marks on the forward assembly of the right SRB. A section of the wing frame and a section of the aft dome from the lower strut attachment area was recovered in one piece. The lower strut attachment fitting had been pulled away. The effects of the anomalous SRB plume can be seen on the external tank, excluding an area which was shielded by the strut and attachment fitting. Approximately 50% of solid rocket booster hardware was recovered. An ordnance storage facility was used to house the motor case pieces, as some contained unburned propellant. Marks seen on the right SRB frustrum match the contact area shown previously on the ET inner tank stringers. The size and location of the burn through as indicated by the recovered SRB debris were illustrated on an assembled booster. The aft center section of the joint shows a large hole centered at the 307 degree circumferential position. The irregular hole is roughly rectangular and is about 27 by 15 inches.